So was that always a goal for you guys to be able to tour more specifically, like coming to America, realizing how popular anime was getting? No way. <laughs> totally I, I can barely beat. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you from Crunchyroll HQ, this is The Anime Effect. Each week we bring you the latest news and views from the shows you love. It's pop culture with an anime lens. This week on The Anime Effect, we are welcoming all five members of Japanese rock band Flow. So crazy. It's, Dude. That's wild to even say that. You know, <sighs> you know their music if you've seen shows like Naruto, Code Geass, or most recently, this one's for you, Lee, Ooh. Kinikuman. Hell yeah. The band stopped by the Crunchyroll HQ to talk about their anime Shibari world tour, mm -hmm. and of course, all of their favorite anime. The, the tour is so great. The show is amazing. The show is amazing. <laughs> but first, we have some exciting news to share with you. We have news from some of our favorite classic anime. Mm -hmm. With you, yeah, specifically, and you, and you. <laughs> some of our favorite classic anime, like Dragon Ball and yu gi -Oh! Where's the pitch pipe? There, we don't have one. As well as some of our favorites like Spy Family Spy and Family. Tower of God. Uh, plus, Tower. <laughs> plus, we have one wild card story just to keep you guessing. Like these two wild cards right here yeah. that won't let me get through the intro. I need, I need a news magnifying glass. Like you a, do. It'd I be like the Howard. You'd, you'd look like the Howard the Duck card on the <laughs> <laughs> Marvel Snap. For all you Marvel Snap players out there. I was thinking more Columbo. Oh, okay. Just to you know, okay. connect it back to anime. Or Wishbone. You know. My favorite anime is Columbo. For sure. I'm still here. I'm your host, Nick Friedman. <laughs> you say that like you're, you're not going anywhere yet, sir. You're not going anywhere yet. Um, I'm exhausted, fresh off of moving. Lee Alec Murray. And it's my birthday. <laughs> Leo President. Whoa. Happy birthday, Leah. Happy birthday. Thank you. We didn't have no party poppers or nothing. You just... I'm one year closer to my isekai. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you can pick one world to go to for your for your birthday. What is it? Like just anyone or an isekai world? Any world. No, anyone. You can pick There's one world to go yeah, to for your anyone. birthday. Hmm. Oh, my God. Do you want to hear an embarrassing story? Is it related to the question I just asked? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. and it, it, I don't know if I've actually told <laughs> Only this. Only if it's a clue. I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show. So if I have, like, and I just blocked it out, tell me. Chat clip that. But right. <laughs> when I was younger and I was, like, just, like, really starting to get, like, very super into Naruto. Like, mm -hmm. it was one of my gateway anime. Of course, I've said that on the show. I was like laying in bed, like, and I was like, please, God, please, God, if you're real, like, please, <laughs> like, put, like, let me die and go to Nar the Naruto world. <laughs> please, like, please. And I remember being like, no matter what happens in my life, like, no matter, like, if I change my mind, just please, when I die, instead of go making me go to heaven, please let me go to the world of Naruto. I was isekai as a Leaf Village Ninja. <laughs> 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 Honestly, if I died and woke up in the Naruto world, I my first thought would be someone has to tell the news that <laughs> Kishimoto is a prophet. Right, and right. has vision into the afterlife. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I was a dead ass too. Like, I was dead ass, like, praying and begging God. Anyway, Ye it's my birthday. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, okay, so did you even work this out as far as, like, what kind of jutsu you would have? Oh, did, did I was Leaf Village all the way. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Did you have a... And I wanted to, like, marry Tachi. Uh, like... Of course. Of course. <laughs> and I also was very into Sakura, so... Don't you feel like Itachi would be too old by the time you get there? Well... Or did. <laughs> or, like, when <laughs> you... Don't, don't poke holes in my isekai <laughs> fantasy, okay? Um... All right, the three of us are here to reveal our deepest, darkest secrets <laughs> and to see just how powerful the effect, I mean, really, the effect of anime. Right, right, right. <laughs> really, really is. is. So next up is the news. We've got an anime film coming to streaming, Whoa. aka Crunchyroll. Yeah, it's so, Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so many more updates about Dragon Ball Daima right. and new openings and endings for Tower of God Season 2. Stick around.
welcome to the news. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the N and Nick stands for news. <laughs> we have so much to share this week, Nick. What do you have for us, Mr. Newsman? I got nothing. Just kidding. Anime news. Let's say if you ain't good, you got nothing. We this show is over. The outfit's on and over. the news is in. First up. <laughs> That was good. Bull uh, that was update. Good. Bulletin. Special bulletin. Spy, <laughs> spy <laughs> Family <laughs> Code White. <laughs> Your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is that it's streaming on uh, Crunchyroll now. You can yes. watch Woo! the movie. Spy the movie Family movie. So good. Um, and this is, it says in here, our absolute number one top story. And that's because our producer is a massive Spy Family mm -hmm. fan. Right. So we had to open with this one. Sub and dub on Crunchyroll, of course. Yeah, English, really. Spanish, Portuguese, French, German, and we got it all. Italian. That's there too. Have you guys seen the movie yet? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. saw it. In I haven't seen it yet. <gasps> I have not it. watched it yet. Go, okay, watch it. We'll talk next week. Okay. We'll all, talk right. Next week. all right. All right. That's all right. a good one that you can watch when the kiddo comes too. <gasps> yeah. Baby's True. first movie. Oh my gosh. That would be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and it also says here why is Spy Family the greatest anime of our generation mm -hmm. question mark uh, <laughs> we're not gonna open that I wonder, <laughs> we're not gonna have that discussion yeah I wonder who wrote, yeah, wonder who wrote that section. one it's, right. um, it's a great it's, it is a great show like Spy Family is great no it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing phenomenal. I love Spy it's, Family so much yeah, the music. It the, does take a art. darker turn in the second season. It does. And mm -hmm. the manga certainly goes places when we start getting some of Lloyd's backstory. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, like you only really get like little bits and pieces of like both Lloyd and yours mm -hmm. like stories. Yeah. But then like when you start digging into to Lloyd's a little more, it's like, damn, man, that was. Damn. Yep. I never knew my father. OK, so we're going to watch. <laughs> I'm going to watch Code White. We'll yes. talk about our, yes. our favorite moments from it next week. All right. Next up on the news front, we have. I know we had an update last week. Dragon Ball Daima Yeah. Is dropping more news. Dragon Ball. There's a new trailer. That's right. Shows off some of the new characters. Mm -hmm. It looks so good. Uh, we got the mini version of Supreme Kai. Which mini is version. Adorable. They're not chibi. They are children. There's <laughs> Glorio, and Pansy is also one of the characters mm. that's joining the mm. series. Of course, one of the things that stood out to me was seeing <laughs> the name Zed. Ariana, I know, dude. what are you doing here? <laughs> Zed, who you might know from, listen, all I know about Zed is I got really, really into his album Clarity that came out in I think like 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm not copyrighted, solid, solid album, copyrighted, solid album. He's doing the OP. It's called Jaka John. It's Zed featuring CNK with lyrics by <laughs> Yukino Jomori. <laughs> Who, if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, uh -huh. you will know created Chala Head Chala. Head Chala. What are your thoughts? I mean, have you watched the trailer, Leah? Mm -hmm. Do you, you're not, you You didn't watch all of Dragon Ball like we did. No, I didn't. What, what it is has your a impression? different vibe from, like I said, I haven't watched all of, you know, Dragon yeah, yeah, Ball, yeah. Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Z, but it does seem to have like a different vibe. Mm -hmm. I'm drawn in by it. So yeah. maybe this will be my little. Get into Dragon Ball arc. We should have a segment when the show is airing of mm -hmm. like answering Leah's Dragon Ball questions be based on I'm here for it. events that <laughs> I'm here happen for it. in Daima. I am here for it. Um, I'm, yeah. You know what? I'm I'm happy that it's going like even in the trailer, like it really gives you hints that it's going back to like the more adventure theme. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the thing that I loved the most about like the original original Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're getting. It looks like it's going to be a mix of like you getting the adventure stuff and then like. There's gonna be some, you know, kid Goku fighting action in there. So he's I'm, got I'm the, the power pole. Yeah, dude, it's great. I'm and like, and also he goes Super Saiyan in his tiny form. Oh, it's awesome. The, you guys really. can explain to me why they get monkey tails. Okay, so the Saiyans are an alien. <laughs> Not race. right now. <laughs> don't don't do it right now. They're born with them. Speaking of OPs and and EDs yeah. ending mm -hmm. themes. Mm -hmm. So this one, it is a shout out for, uh, this one's gotta be a shout out for Allie, who's on the social team mm -hmm. at Crunchyroll and is a massive fan of this band, Stray Kids. Oh Ooh. my God. Little and Lexi, Kids shout moment. out Lexi. Oh yeah, shout out Lexi too. <laughs> Stray Kids is performing the opening and ending theme songs oh, for oh. the second core of Tower of God season wow. two. So it was announced this week that popular is an understatement. Mm -hmm. The K-pop band Stray Kids will return because they did the opening and endings for season one. Mm -hmm. They will return to perform the new themes for Tower of God season two. The band said in a statement that the new songs were created with Bomb and the other characters in mind so that the songs could coexist within the world of Tower of God 
workshop battle, which is the name of mm -hmm. the arc that we're headed into in the mm -hmm. anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love Stray Kids. Stray I... Kids is good. I'm not like <laughs> like great. deep into the K-pop world, but like everything I've heard from Stray Kids has yeah. been really great. I need Felix's gender, gender envy. What? <laughs> and big time androgyny. Is there a band that you guys wish would come back to create a new op &ED for a series? Ooh. Mm. Like come back or like just one I want to see. So from. like an ongoing series, uh -huh. a band that did an OP early yep. or previously yep. that you'd love to see come back to do another OP for that show. I love Mix Nuts, the OP from Spy. Yeah. So I, good. I, dun, I dun. really, really wish that that artist would come back and, and do some stuff. Do yeah, else. that was great. That was cool. chill vibes all yeah. around. I would say probably Chico Coave because like they kind of just dropped a couple bangers and then disappeared <laughs> like from the anime opening world like are in high school host club ending of elf and lied we've brought back elf and lied how <laughs> um second week in a row right i'd probably go I'm, I'm this is my excuse to talk about fire force again because the ops in fire force are just like Bangers. 10 out of 10 every All single of one of them is good there's ma there's uh, yeah. miss green apple uh, oh i would love oh, miss green the... apple to come back uh, second OP, Mayday from Cold Rain featuring Keo. Oh, Mayday is so Woo. good. Orange Mayday, Range. Mayday, Mayday. Well, huh? you wouldn't know because you didn't watch Bleach, but <laughs> you know you know the Bleach opening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, That, oh, so fire, yeah, so fire. it'd be great. I love that, that opening. Next up, we got some Yu-Gi-Oh fans in the chat. <gasps> yeah! <laughs> It's time. So I can't remember if we've talked about this on the show before. Uh, I think we lightly mentioned it like during a Nintendo update. I maybe think. we did. So Konami dropped some more information about the Yu-Gi-Oh! Early Days collection. I'm so excited for this which, collection. Bro. Loving this trend of us getting games just repackaged. I've yep. been playing through the Castlevania Dominus collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to it's grab good. that old Switch, dude. I love those games. They confirmed a number of uh, titles that are coming back. There's some Game Boy games. Uh, one of the ones I want to call out here is Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories. Oh, my God. Which was one of the ones we got Ooh. here in the States on yeah. the Game Boy Color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um, a few. Great game. Amazing game. <laughs> if we start to see... So I feel like the big thing here is that there's going to be a lot of Japanese games on this, For sure. in this collection. For and sure. I believe they're not going to be localized. Which if you know the card rules, yeah. then you should be, be good. Right, yeah. Which I don't. Even some of the older ones, I've I just, definitely forgot. I just gave you like a hundred Yu-Gi-Oh cards the other day. That's it's true. time to learn. I got them in Goodwill. I'll do a draft deck. I'll, I'll learn Yu-Gi-Oh with you, buddy. Um, if it makes you feel better. But yeah, so I'm I'm really curious to see how far this collection is going to go because there's a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh games. There's supposed to be ten plus games on this thing. Because I'm like. We're gonna get some of the DS stuff in there. We're gonna get some of the PSP games. That's what I was gonna say. There was some. There was some fire PSP ones. So I'd, I'd be interested mm -hmm. to see if those, if we're getting those. Too. I was always jealous of the neighborhood kids because I didn't have like my own game system until later on, and they were playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was like, damn, I wish that were me. <laughs> Do you remember there was a PS2 game? That was an adaptation of War of the Roses, but with Yu-Gi-Oh characters. Yes, yes. Du Duelist of the Roses. Duelist of the Roses, yeah. Great game. It was love, so love good, Love to dude. see that come back. <laughs> it was um, so good. And of course, in keeping with Yu-Gi-Oh video game fashion uh -huh. of, of your, there will be a trading card in the uh, physical release. Of, the of your? One of two. Like, b of before. Of, of before, your. your. Oh, I thought you meant oh. of your from Spy Family. No. I was no, like, no, 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 that's no, an no, interesting no, no. crossover. That'd be great. <laughs> Talking about books. <laughs> We're about to talk about, what books. about books. I love that this is in here. Okay. So I'll be clear. This is not anime. Um it's not this is not yeah, an anime series. It's, so. Yeah. But it's something we have to talk about. But they're ad adapting. Okay. How do I frame set this? Set it up, set it there up. There is okay. a Twilight book. <laughs> so you know Twilight, the vampires, they they have the glitter. Say it. And they run really fast. And Supermassive Black Hole by Muse. Uh, and... How did we get here? I'm actually wearing a Paramore <laughs> shirt right now to the listeners that can't see it. But... So there's the main Twilight series. Right. And then the author, Stephanie Meyer, after wrapping that up, did a book called Midnight Sun, which retells the events of the first Twilight book mm -hmm. from the perspective of uh, Roberto Pattinson. Roberto Pattinson? Uh, who played Edward He's Cullen. a father now. He is a father. Father Roberto Pat Pattinson. It's gonna be an, Padre It's gonna be an animated series. I saw the news on this, bro. I'm a I'm a Twilight defender. I'm not a Twilight. Those movies rule. 
not because they're amazing, not because they're feats in storytelling, solely because <laughs> solely because I think it's the last one, part one. I watched these for the first time like last year with my wife because she was like, you got to see these. I was like, no, I'm going to hate them. And then I was like, peak. Read them. They were the fantasy. Was it like... Breaking Dawn part one where they changed something from the book where you're in the theater and you watch all of the main characters die? Yeah. And then it's like a misdirect? Yeah. That is so bold C cinematically sorry our producer is correcting us here that is breaking dawn part two part two well yeah you're technically right because it's like yeah when they go inside dakota fanning's eye, eye yeah. brain and she sees a vision of yeah. all of them getting murdered and i was like are you kidding me i, I just spent like nine hours watching these guys <laughs> play baseball and, and now you're gonna kill them all anyway how are you wanted you're Alice's still he's haircut. still looking at me he's held this pose the whole time <laughs> how do we feel about um this <laughs> so, i have no skin in the game for twilight at all um but i uh, and and i'll round this up because we were talking about terminator last night yeah yeah, yeah. terminator I, zero there's anime or, yeah, yeah yeah i love when stories become part of animated mediums like whether it be like just western animation or just anime in general yep i think it's cool because i think there's a way that you can tell a story in animation that you can't tell in live action. Mm -hmm. Like how they could have done the last season of Game of Thrones over in animation. They definitely could have. Even though this may not be for me and is clearly Nick coded. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. Uh, clearly. Um, I think this is I, I think this is cool and could actually open up more stuff for novels or movies that they want to continue but they're like hey the cast may be too old and we don't want to do this as a movie but we can still get the cast but they should totally the get the cast back if you're Robert going Hansen to is like i i'm down if Let's you're do going it. to do this and again they have no skin in this game but if you're going to do this and it fits into like book and movie canon you have to bring your people back yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to spend the money and bring your people back mm -hmm. before anyone gets mad at me the producer has uh that has you know. corrected me that it was not Dakota Fanning, whose eyeball we journey inside of. It is Michael Sheen. How could I forget a Michael Sheen character? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But uh, we'll never forget Dakota Fanning's red contact lenses. <laughs> Coming up next. They look like they're going to pop out of everyone's eyes. Like. Oh my God. Coming up next, <laughs> we have uh, Lee Alec and Leah's amazing conversation with Flo. Yeah, it was so mm -hmm. much fun, dude. I would have done it, but then you would have been hearing way too many voices at the same time. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm really excited. You guys are going to love it. That is coming up next. This week, we are so excited, so excited to be here with the iconic band Flo. You've heard their songs if you've watched Naruto. Kogis, and most recently, Kino Kuman. Yeah. yeah, I know you're excited for that one. Yeah. He loves wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> They're behind just so many iconic anime OPs and EDs. And, you know, before we start, we want to hear a little bit from each of you. So would you mind just introducing yourself and, and just telling us a little bit about what you do with the band? Hi, uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Kago. I'm Boko. You're just going to <laughs> No, I'm Kosh. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, my name is Take. Uh, I play guitar. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is God, bass guitar player. Yes. Uh, my name is Iwasaki. Uh, I, I play drums. We are from. <laughs> 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 We are so excited to have you. You are fresh off your show in Dallas last night, and Lee was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, this show was incredible. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. The energy that's in the room when you have just a show based around anime music is insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. the when the both uh, head chala and the Naruto theme, yeah. like just. Insane. People look crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so thank you so much for joining us on the Anime Effect. That actually leads into our first question. You know, being on the Anime Shibari tour, why did you choose to only play anime songs on this tour? Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
だったんですけどやっぱそこから世界各国いろんなアニメコンベンションのイベントに出させてもらう中ですごいこう日本のアニメそしてアニメソングが愛されていることを強く実感してそれを自分たちなりに届けたいと思ったからです。Right, and we are definitely some of those fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a part of the show, you guys do Chala, He Chala, which is probably one of the most iconic、uh, Dragon Ball songs that has ever been used and is really beloved. When you guys play songs like that, what has the, the crowd reaction been like on the tour? Yeah, well, I'm going to say Dragon Ball is the most i c o n i c もう全世界で愛されているのはすごくわかりますし、今回のアメリカのツアーでずっとやってきても、アメリカの皆さんもそのドラゴンボール大好きっていうのが伝わってくるし、なんかこう自分たちもカバーさせてもらって、本当に光栄だなって。Mm. Yeah, and it's one of several other covers that you're performing on this tour. So,、um, to those fans who are looking forward to your upcoming shows, and of course, you have Europe coming up, are there any more covers that fans can look forward to seeing you perform? This is a question, you know, since you're doing so many covers, there's so many different anime that you know, you've know, o y u written iconic songs for or covers that the fans recognize. What I want to know, and this is kind of a fun one, is which character from an anime that you've performed the opening or ending for do you relate to the most? Oh, I can do it. 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 ファインはわりとこう痛みをテーマにしてて、イタチとサッケのその兄弟の話だったりするんで、俺は兄弟でバンドやってて、兄貴の方なんでイタチの気持ちでタワコを歌ってますね。イバリアス。ドラゴンボ
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you're surprised, are you surprised at the reaction that you guys are getting? あの、Yeah. So, you know, we just talked a little bit about you just playing in Dallas, you're kind of finishing up the American leg of this tour, about to go to Europe. Looking back, you know, on the American tour dates, do you have a favorite U.S. city that you like to perform in? And has there been an, a night on this tour that really stands out to you? They had some really crazy stories. Like, at the- <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the life of a rock star. <laughs> but what about a favorite, favorite city? city. Mm. New York. Mm. Oh. Yes, I love New York. Mm. Yeah, the energy is great. That's our first time. So, so exciting. Oh, really? First yeah. time in New wow. York? Yeah. Did you love it? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Awesome. San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio. Mm-hmm. The Texas Texans are bringing it out. Yeah, yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Oh, yes, you, you mentioned that, yeah. 15 years ago. Does it feel like that long ago, or do you feel like it was just yesterday? Amazing. <laughs> so, what is you guys' favorite part of performing? I Wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wave. 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 Working with the crowd. Yeah. Yes. I have to say, I love when you guys did the, the instrument solos. Like, those were... Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Guitar hit it. Dance. Dance performance. I didn't play. <laughs> dance performance. <laughs> uh, dance only. So... For you guys in your career, is an album that speaks to your identity as a band, or even a song that speaks to your identity as a band? Well, the way I put it, anime best or has made a dust, no, ah, it was an identity not the gana to what the day. The sorry, mother, ni, ni, hon, no, bando, ga, so you compile star, anime song, or compile star, album, dust, the nakatan, de, so you be the pioneer that the gana to my was me. Yeah, for sure. And I think the excitement from the fans speaks for itself. You know, they're happy for this material. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then let's talk a little bit more about tour life, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Whether it's a food or a city or an experience, what are you most looking forward to for the rest of the tour? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 今回いろんな行ってない国に行けるのがまず一つすごく楽しみにしてます。Awesome, that's exciting. New experiences. Yeah. I like food. あの、好き。快適なバスの旅をしたい。寝れるバス。You must this tour is so tough. That was hard. And it's a lot of people on one bus. Yeah, because the AC broke. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They told that's the, horrible. They told the story last oh, week at the show oh that it broke God. in Vegas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> in Vegas? <laughs> Broken stay, the tire of the stay. Yeah, we, we got a flat tire and uh, many leaks. And oh. when yeah. it rained. Wow. Yes. Oh, I'm so we sorry. Have a, we have a lot of troubles. Yeah, <laughs> and it's bus. been like over a hundred degrees yeah. in the, the area. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we're did, happy we to have it. you. Yeah. 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 You did it. Yeah. I, is, is there something that you guys have to take with you when you go on tour? Or is there something specific you need to have? Mm. <laughs> Security wombat. <laughs> Who's the best at cards? <laughs> That's why you like to play. <laughs> That's why they bring the cards. Is there something that you can only get in the U.S. that you look forward to? Uh, craft beer. 
。ああ、ね、ええ。ああ、any any もうすべての、えー、州でクラフトビアいただいたんで。Every state. Wow. Who's got the best? Everything. I love alcohol. <laughs> at a certain point, yeah. just all of it, just all of it. <laughs> at a certain point, it's all the best. Yeah, <laughs> that is so funny. Also, so you know, as you're about to leave Dallas and as you're about to go on this European tour, is there a favorite European city that you're looking forward to? I love Spain、mm. because I I love the artist. Salvador Dali. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I want to go to the, his his museum. Museums.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to see it every.、Mm. Yeah, that's the place to go to museums <laughs> for sure.、Yes. Mm. I love Germany、mm. because I love beer. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I'm sorry, Jonas. And sausage, matching very good.、Mm. Mm-hmm. And. Lastly, do you guys have anything that you want to say to your fans who have come out to your tour or who are going to be, you know, visiting the rest of your tour and cheering you on? Hi, I'm on the first North America tour. I'm on the first time in 2020. 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 さっきもちょっと喋りましたけどいろんなトラブルがありましたがもう本当に一本一本お客さんが楽しんでる姿を見て僕たちの曲を歌ってくれてる姿を見て、えー、皆さんに本当に支えられて回りきったツアーだなと思いますでこれからヨーロッパツアー南米ツアーと続いていきますけど、えー、また一本一本みんなと、えー、楽しんでいい思い出をずっと作って。Be 続けられるようなツアーにしたいなと思います。Yeah, that's perfect.、Yes. And I know I said lastly on the last question, but I have one more question. <laughs> so when we're talking about you know twenty years of your band,、um, is there any celebration that you might be having just you know to wrap up this tour or to commemorate? You know, two decades together. Oh, eh, to Nihon, Nihon, Nan, this kid, oh, to see Nijus Shun and no timing with a Juventus and Fesso Tachageta, this year. So, 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 thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. And good、so、luck、much. on the rest of your tour.、Yeah. And we are going to be supporting you from afar. Yes. yes. Thank, thank you. you. Check, Check it out. out. Front <laughs> row. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> the interview. It was great. It was so good. So much fun. I can't believe you guys talked to Flo. I, like, listen, me being. If, if little kid me、mm-hmm. would know that I would talk to Flo later in my life, he'd be like, Bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? What does your life become? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you tell me. Also,、um, invest in、right. Apple also stock. Also, invest in Apple stock, please. <laughs> Go right now. Buy Take, two Bitcoins. You, 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 know those, the, you know the comic book money you got this week? <laughs> Put it in Apple stock, please. Right,、yep. um, yeah, it was great. It was great. If you guys haven't seen them on tour yet, Mm-hmm. Please go. It's awesome.、Um, It's a fun combo. But it is time for the recommendations. Recommendations. This week, doing a little different because you know we've been theming it out, right? Themes, yeah. It's been fun. Starter pack. So, <laughs> anime starter pack to be more specific. Yep. Um, yep. But from Anika, from the question form, in your opinion, what is the anime that you would recommend to someone who's just started watching? This is a very big and broad question and becomes bigger and broader the more anime comes out. Broad. So think of this as a starter answer to the starter pack question. Right. Because right. 
because we can legally have... this is not our final answer it is not it is not i thought of some fun titles legally i did too um but young nicholas <laughs> that's really what you good. got for me so i went through my completed list on my anime list because i had i, to, I did the same thing <laughs> and i yeah and i had to like i had to decide what i felt like might be too much for someone who doesn't know anything about anime right like something that too. may lean too hard into like the tropes or right. sakuga or right. like something that is like step two step three and right. not step one right. so i picked two shows okay the first one is i believe it's on netflix kotaro lives alone oh yeah okay which is a series about a little kid who does <laughs> everything alone he <laughs> lives in an apartment alone he moves into this apartment complex and it's about um, kind of his journey to trying to just be a kid with mm. overwhelming responsibility while he's meeting the like weird and wacky adults that live in this apartment complex with okay. him, including the the other main character who sort of becomes like a father figure for him. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it. cute. It's very it sounds, cute. Sounds cozy AF, bro. Yeah, it it really the english dub is great and the funny english dub is fantastic funny. especially if this is your first anime and you want to watch dub or sub like whatever mm -hmm. it's so funny slice of life is great great writing mm -hmm. i just highly recommend kotaro lives alone that's mm -hmm. to me you got to have something that like tells a very human story first agree without adding a fantastical element to For it sure. speaking of which <laughs> i'm also recommending re recommending spy family that's a good one that's which, a very good starter because you can easily make comps to things that other people may have already heard of, right? So like Mr. and Mrs. Smith mm -hmm. or Home Alone. That was yep, the other yep, one that Home I was thinking of. Yep. It is, it really eases you in. It sets the world up. It sets the stakes. There's a, kind of like a pseudo historical setting to it. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the entire thing is is sort of grounded by Anya, who mm -hmm. is an adorable, very easy to understand, very easy to um, root for character. Right. And you sort of see the world through her eyes and then you're introduced to the character it's, it's yeah. very easy to follow the action is great yeah. but it it starts to weave in those fantastical elements that make anime yep. storytelling so special yeah. but it dumbs it down enough for you and i won't say yeah. dumb it down like it's dumb but it it, 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 it eases you in right it lowers your yeah. barrier of entry yeah. yep so my contributions to our starter pack are kotura lives alone and spy family Ooh, mm -hmm. leah oh man okay I actually disagree with you, Nick, what? that you shouldn't lean into some, the the notion that you shouldn't lean into something that's very tropey mm -hmm. or like that. Because I feel like you need to get in the vibe. Just like jump right into the like, deep end. Like I think you need to jump into the deep end and because a lot of those tropes or like references mm -hmm. to anime tropes play into funny things and like humor that you see in other like later sure. on down the line. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but I see what you mean also. So I could go either way. But my <laughs> my opinion is such that I think you should dive in head first. So everybody should watch at least one thing that you have heard is cringe. <laughs> Everyone should watch at least one thing you think you gotta have you've bonus heard cringe. is cringe. You gotta have some and, bonus cringe. And get in there and get the vibes and okay. understand it. Just okay. Nichijou right over Because back. anime is such a unique medium. But Nichijou's not medium. cringe. Something with ecchi could be cringe. Yeah. Or, or just, too much fan service. Or I just like, said Nichijou you know. because it's wacky. Like you have to kind of like throw out any expectations. Oh, you'll definitely get show. yourself well, well acclimated with the... Uh, Surrealism yep. that can mm -hmm. be in a lot of anime. Yep. Yep. But, yeah. Continue. Like something something non-vignette, but that that's like a linear story sure. that's like you've heard is cringe. Definitely jump in and just get on that vibe. Just, rip the band just get off. in that vibe. <laughs> and then I have two serious recommendations. I do not consider these cringe. These are not cringe. They are not cringe. Um, the first one, of course, is Attack on Titan. Oh Everybody says don't start with that one. <sighs> Okay, I know, I know. You're like, here's but, 80 episodes that you should watch. I know, 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 I know. But everyone says you shouldn't start with Attack on Titan because it is peak. It is goaded with the sauce. <laughs> oh, my God. The reason I'm recommending this is because from what I have seen, not even just my own personal fandom, mm -hmm. but how I have seen it affect the culture is it kind of transcends the typical narrative that people think anime will have. But another one that I recommend is Fruits Basket because I find that Fruits Basket represents everything great about anime. Yeah. 
it is funny. It has those like larger than life moments. It's got like a huge cast of characters. So you with all these different backgrounds who literally represent different personality types. So there is going to be somebody that you love and that you can stand and mm-hmm. you can right off the bat say like, oh, that's my favorite character mm-hmm. because there's so many different like the cast is huge. If you mm-hmm. don't know, it's based on like the Zodiac. Mm-hmm. So there's like a character for every animal in the Zodiac. Mm-hmm. They all have different personalities and characteristics. Um, like I said, it's funny. It also has like a darker side with some of those more fantastical elements yeah. that mm-hmm. you were talking about, Nick. It's just something that it's the full range of, like I said, like what an- what is great about anime. Mm-hmm. It, it'll make you feel every emotion from laughing to being like sad to being uplifted. Yeah. Oh, I cried. Yeah, I was like, just <laughs> like full cried. face full yeah. crying. Ugly yeah. Um, yeah. It's something that'll sit with you. And it was one of my early anime. Mm-hmm. And even though I think maybe the first time I interacted with it was like, I don't know, like over 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I still think about it. But yeah, those are my recommendations. Sorry. Long winded answer. but Cool. Lee? What do you got, Lee? All right. So, like you, young Nicholas, um, I was going through like both my Crunchyroll list and my my anime list, and I was like, oh, "What can I give that people could be involved in, mm-hmm. like almost right away?" And I have two titles, kind of a mix of both of you guys' like reasoning for getting into anime, mm-hmm. like starting it. Um, one I picked was Licorice Recoil. Hmm. mostly because it was an original a lot, I think the hardest part for a lot of people getting into anime is is they feel like they have to read the source material to get it sure Licorice Recoil is an original you there's no source material well I think they're doing like some sort of some some original like, stories yeah, yeah. in manga yeah. now but in um, response to the success right yeah. but to watch and understand the core series you, there's no source material that you have to go off of you can just dive right in and learn about this world and learn about these characters and yes it does get uh fanciful at the beginning because you have to really sell yourself of on this agency that's you know full of assassin like girls (laughs) and you're like yeah Yeah, you're you're like oh okay um but i find that like the main characters are are funny and it's really Mm -hmm. heartwarming and gives you like not only does it give you family vibes, but there's a sure. lot of great action in it oh, as well, yeah. too. Um, A1 and, Pictures really... Oh, man. Really yeah, A1 Pictures knocked this one out. It won an anime yeah. award, right? I think so. Best yeah, original? I believe so. I, I believe so. I enjoyed every minute of mm-hmm. this anime, and I feel like it's one that people could really get into and really, like... I don't want to say shape their fandom, but it's something that could very easily, like... Let people know that anime is this easy to watch, right? Like, because when you watch... like. I think I was maybe 10 minutes into episode one and I was like, this is fantastic. You're like, I'm going to watch this entire thing. I'm just going to watch this whole thing today. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so that was my first one. Um, second one, this is totally Nick Cody. <gasps> um, but second one is Ranking of Kings. Yay! Um, I think Boji is probably one of my probably top five, top 10 anime main characters. Agreed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way that you get to interact with the story, almost in a very Anya way, is that you're seeing his, you're seeing his entire life through the scope of this kid that isn't, quote unquote, supposed to be special or supposed to amount to anything. And he yeah. totally flips that entire narrative on its head. And the animation is beautiful. It's a, It's a story about like, not only finding your family, but figuring out how to be a part of your family. Yep. Even if mm-hmm. they're wanting you to be something else. Especially that first core of yeah. that series yeah. and the adventure that Boji goes on. Yeah. It's such a like I I wrote we do these like quote love letters to anime of the year nominees every year. And I mm-hmm. believe it was two years ago when Ranking of Kings was up so. for so. Anime of the Year. And I wrote that one and I, I talked about how like effortlessly hopeful this series yes, is absolutely because mm-hmm. of Bochi. you feel yeah. you feel good watching this series yeah. no matter if you're in a point where it's like it's super serious it's really and dark. it's really dark and brutal yeah, yeah. because of how Boji sees this series like sees himself in this world yeah he's like i am never down i am never out 
period. There's a certain point where it's literally like Thor showing up in Wakanda during yeah, Infinity yeah. War when you see Boji. <laughs> it is. Like, and it's such a great moment yeah. because he shows up and they're like, what are you going to do? And he was like, it's like oh, oh, me? You want to oh, see me? what I can do? You go see what I can do. <laughs> There's so many great moments in the show. The action is great. I already I said it. the animation was great. The OPEDs, oh, so amazing, good. absolutely amazing. King New, Vondi, yeah, just man, great stuff. incredible, incredible. So I feel like these are two shows that I think people could get into that are very low barrier of entry, mm -hmm. almost two different ends of the spectrum. Um, well, there you go. Yeah, our yeah. Uh, anime starter pack, at least our first pass at it. There you is... go. We'll have to do this again. This is a fun question. We've got Kotaro Lives Alone, Spy Family, Licorice Recoil, Ranking of Kings, Attack on Titan. Fruits Basket mm -hmm. and some bonus cringe. <laughs> so bonus you gotta cringe. Have Your choice. Gotta have Your choice. Bonus cringe. It looks like we also got some recommendations from our listeners we this did. week. We have from Michael via our, our question form. As recommendations go, Charlotte was a good one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Iriduku, The World in Colors. Okay. If you need anything to distract yourself but entertain you, this too can work. Hmm. Hmm. Nice picks. Then we have Asta Sukihiro via our question form, who recommends Fairy Gone, Seven Deadly Sins, mm -hmm. obviously the Silver Guardian, <laughs> obviously. and maybe God Eater, question mark, mm. exclamation point. But I also can't believe Decadence got a shout out. Love it. Hell yeah, Love brother. It. Hell yeah, brother. Great show. <laughs> Uh, very fantastical. I, yep. You will never be able to foresee where episodes two and three of that series go yeah. after watching episode one. Crazy. And there's also this spot on our question form where we ask uh, if there are any topics that we'd like people to cover. Mm. And uh, Asta, who wrote in the last recommendation, mm. had this to say. Not really. Y'all are doing <laughs> uh, right now Jesus's work for real, for real. Jesus. He was like, y'all doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Shout out to Austin. Thank, thank you, Austin. Jesus Thanks. is canonically an anime character because he was in One Punch Man with Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> and we got this from a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Love Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, Attack on Titan, oh. My Hero Academia, Mob Psycho, One Piece, and Death Note. Some cores right there. Some cores right there. Also, we officially surpassed 100 yeah. reviews on Spotify. Yeah. We're Let's at like go. 130. Let's keep go. rating the show. <laughs> keep leaving Everywhere. comments. Keep Everywhere. rating the show. Um, we are so close to hitting 100 reviews on Apple Podcasts. So if you're listening right now on Apple Podcasts. Do it. Like, I mean, if you're driving, wait. Don't, yeah, wait, wait, wait. But, but it. when you when it's safe. <laughs> Tell Siri to do go it. Go to Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Siri, write my hand of a review. Leave a review. Drop a recommendation. Dunk on me, whatever you guys want to do. Oh and thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, it literally is why we get to keep doing this thing and it helps more people find the show. Yeah. Oh. And now. <laughs> <sighs> We've got some listener mail. Time to open a mailbag. Mailbag. That was me As revealing my outfit. To his, his, his <laughs> boy outfit. What's the question for this week? The question this week is from Teresa via our question form. Thanks, Thank Teresa. You. Mm -hmm. What show do you think you would hate but ended up loving? That oh. is a very good question. Okay, so my pick for this one is Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. Oh, mm. okay. Because when I started watching the show... And I would so, think this is one that's like right up your alley yeah, immediately. Yeah, so I love a good teasing rom-com. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Teasing Master Takagi-san. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's uh, Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang mm -hmm. Out. Yeah. There's uh, My Clueless First Friend. Like there's a lot of... There's good stuff out there. Dangers in My Heart, another mm -hmm. great one. Mm -hmm. um, definitely one of my favorites from this year. Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro begins with what I can only describe as a very accurate depiction of bullying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 100%. She is so brutal yeah. to <laughs> the main character. Yeah. Do we ever know his name or is he just senpai? I, I think he's just I think he's just I senpai. know he has a name. Yeah. And I should know this, but I know he has a name and I don't remember, but it's just like you always like he's just senpai. But, but yeah, so the, and there's a moment and the show really finds itself in season 2 mm -hmm. where you do start like you understand Nagatoro, she kind of grows mm -hmm. and 
the bullying is sort of left behind to yeah. the extent that it was in. Right. It, it becomes less and less brutal yes. the more the it's show goes It's more on. wholesome. Yeah. It's more, and it, it really starts to settle itself into one of the best of those like teasing series, yeah. right, right up there. Like Teasing Master Takagi-san is one of my favorites because mm. it's so yeah, wholesome. You mentioned, you mentioned that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you got to go to like eight different places to watch all three seasons in the movie, but um, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good one. It's a really good series, but mm-hmm. okay. yeah. So Nagatoro, cool. my pick. Um, sales at work. Interesting. Why? Why did you not think you would like it? So I like originally, and I don't know where this came from, but I was like, I really don't want this to be some super weird like, like sketch show or like oh it's like an, a, like yeah like I was a, like I don't yeah. want yeah I was like man like I don't. And okay. then you realized it was like psychopaths uh, Osmosis Jones. That's what I was like. Right? And then yeah. I figured out it was anime Osmosis Jones. <laughs> and I loved it immediately because I love Osmosis love Jones. Osmosis Jones. Um, but no, like I was so glad that I ended up like really loving the series. Sure. Like the, the year it came out, it was actually like one of my favorite of the year. I was like, it's just so masterfully done the way yeah. that they like talk about the human body and you learn a lot yeah and you learn a lot and <laughs> it's they, like miss frizzle yeah yeah, yeah. yeah honestly you, very you, magic school you, bus you care and it characterizes all of this like stuff from like the way your body works like your yeah. all your like red white blood cells mm-hmm. and then like diseases what's what like the power that. what's the powerhouse of the cell right yeah. what is it so tell it, me what it is um, what is the powerhouse of the cell you're not gonna do this to me right now uh, <laughs> mitochondria. mitochondria my brain is shutting down um <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah and it was and i i think Part of the reason I love the show so much is because of the white blood cell, like the main oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... <laughs> is he the like? Is he brooding or is it comedic? Yeah, I don't. Like the... I don't know. I, I think it's meant to be both. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's meant to poke fun at the like, the brooding characters. Like you're, you're, you're the you're, brooding white haired yeah, OP yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think Conaki, right? Just say yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's what he's meant to be there for. But then he's, but he's a great character. Yeah. Like he's really thoughtful. Like he's like cares about his job, stuff like that. So, and then the little platelets, little platelets. Oh, the yeah. platelets are platelets cute. cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, young Leah. <laughs> <laughs> young Leah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny, but Idolish Seven. Interesting. Hmm. I watched this like I think like two years ago. Now I started it. Um, and bef- this was like before like the Oshino Cove at all, sure. where like sort of like idol anime were coming back into vogue. They've always been there yep. and they've always been mm-hmm. made, but like it wasn't a hot topic at the Should time. Should have been Zombie Land yeah. Saga. Continue. <laughs> um, <laughs> Continue. Agreed. But uh, it's just so funny. Like it has like some of my favorite anime scenes, like comedy scenes in it, which you've maybe seen me post on the works. <laughs> some videos um but yeah i think just like getting to know the characters and their struggles Mm -hmm. i think it kind of makes you uh in a way i mean i was already sort of like a k-pop fan as well and some j-pop also yeah um but it, it evokes that same thing where like you pick your biases and like you kind of like just follow along with their story. They have a lot of really encouraging moments too about like not giving up and yeah. um, you know, balancing the struggles that you have in your personal life. But yeah, I it was kind of like a a silent hit for me. Or what is it called? Sleeper hit. A sleeper, sleeper hit, hit for me. Yeah. Um, because I just didn't expect much of it. Mm. And it turned out to be really like laugh out loud funny for me. So mm. thank you. Great question. Yeah, it was a great question. Thank you, everybody, for writing in. Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome. Please continue to not only give us reviews everywhere, but use that question form. Young Nicholas, what is it? <laughs> Got.cr slash anime effect questions. That's got. G O T mm-hmm. dot C R God slash dot sla- slash slash anime effect questions. Got that C R yeah. slash anime effect questions. Get us to a hundred on Apple Podcasts. Get us to a thousand on Spotify. Do it. Give me a hundred and fifty dollars cash to my Venmo <laughs> account. <laughs> Also, if you're watching, or I guess if you're listening, you might notice we have a little bit of a new look. Oh, right. We didn't even mention. This beautiful new anime effect art. I love it. Crunchyroll so podcast. I love, I love it. it. It's orange. It's bright. Um, 
We've got like yeah. throwing stars coming out I of know. it. I know. It's also very cool. Good. It's awesome. Anyway, yeah, you can see it on the, uh, if you're listening, you can see it as the album art as yeah. well. Yeah. So let us know if you like it. Yeah. Like, let us know if, if, if you're A little remix it. for you. A little remix. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, wait, wait, wait. All right, Lee, take us out. Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Anime Effect brought to you by Crunchyroll and the folks over at Sony Music. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. The Anime Effect is hosted by me, Nick Friedman, Lee Alec Murray, and Leah President. We are executive produced by Jonathan Hirsch, Shara Morris, and me. Young Nicholas. Our lead producer is Kyla Carnero, <laughs> and our associate producer is Zoe Tolkien. Patrick Camille edited and mixed this episode's audio. Vince Garza filmed and Aaron Nidick edited the video. Our head of production is Sammy Allison. Special thanks to Carla Solorzano and to Mika Balance Kalasny. We'll be back next week with even more anime, of course. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Bye. <laughs> Later days. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow.